Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. It's very exciting to be here uh, for the first in-kind direct speaker series event. My name's Chris. I'm uh, I'm here to guide you through for the next hour. Um, we've got three amazing speakers lined up, as the name suggests. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about them before they take to the stage, um, and I'll go through a bit of an agenda in a moment. Um, but before that, I just wanted to get a sense of where you all are. And as people gradually drift in and start joining us, uh, they can they can join in the conversation. So the first bit of housekeeping is you will see, hopefully on the right hand side of your screen, there is a, a Q and A function, a chat function. If you could, uh, I just want to know where you all are. So if you could drop into that uh, Q and A, a little message to to let us know where you are. Um, whilst everyone else is dropping in. We will uh, we will go through those and see where everyone is. Uh, the wonderful Jermaine is in the background moderating all of the chats that are coming in, uh, which is very exciting. <laughs> Razan has has already commented saying that she's in rainy London, which is great. We have uh, Treen coming up, who is uh, in Copenhagen. Not sure if it's rainy. Um, I'm seeing her screen, her video feed, and I can't see any sky. So we'll we'll see where we are on that one. So yes, a few sort of housekeeping things. Um, we are doing this for the first time, so please do bear with us if there are any slightly uh, slow transitions, if slides take a little bit of time to, to appear. Um, and we're doing it completely live as well. So we have no recorded sections. This is all live, we're all here. I have three amazing speakers ready to, ready to speak to you. Um, we should be very comfortably within the, within the hour. Um, so let me just show you what we are what we're, who we're hearing from. We have, uh, Razan is gonna kick us off. Uh, we'll then go over to Treen, fly over to Copenhagen to learn about Flying Tiger Copenhagen. And then we're back to uh, Nottingham to listen to Nick Williams from the Renewal Trust. Um, as I say, throughout the event, please do, uh, please do add in questions in the Q&A section, um, because at the end of the three talks, we will be um, visiting those questions, uh, those published questions, and we will um, ask a few to the panel. So that's your chance to be interactive, to listen to uh, to listen to what they have to say on, on your questions. So um, we're very excited about that. Um, the final bit of housekeeping is around, uh, we will be sharing the slides with you within a week. So all of the information you're seeing, don't worry about recording anything. We will be sharing it all with you uh, so you can go through it at your leisure. Um, that's probably enough rambling on from me about what's coming up. Um, so I can introduce our first speaker. So our first speaker is our very own Chief Executive, Roseanne Gray. Uh, Roseanne joined in kind direct towards the end of last year, 2019, and she brought with her a wealth of experience across um, a, a broad range of industries. So for the past 18 years, she's worked in a variety of organizations such as Shell. She's been at tech startups, uh, environmental foundations. She founded Cotton Connect, um, which is a, a global business that, that is aimed to transform the cotton supply chains. Uh, she's worked for Virgin Foundation, Virgin Unite. Um, across all her roles, she's, she's tried to harness the power of businesses to transform people's lives. And um, that's no more relevant than here at Inkind Direct. Uh, so she's going to explain a little bit about what we do at Inkind Direct. She's going to give you some insights into what we've been up to and what we've achieved so far this year and look a little bit uh, to the future. Um, as we aim to support more charities. So that's more than enough rambling from me to get you started. Um, I will now hand over to Inkind Direct CEO, uh, Rosanne Gray. Thanks very much, Chris. Uh, that's fantastic. And thank you for the introduction. And hopefully my slides will appear on the screen like magic um, as, I, as I kick off. Um, so before we uh, hear from our other fantastic speakers, I'd just love to give you an update um, on, you know, some of the work that we have been doing at Inkind Direct over uh, the last few months. For some of you, it will be the first time that you will have uh, maybe heard about Inkind Direct. For some of you, you will have been working with us for, uh, you know, many, many years but uh, you, you know, may have just joined us as a new charity partner during the crisis. It's incredible. We've actually been going for 24 years and we were set up by the Prince of Wales way back in 1996. We are uh, the UK leading charity 
distributing consumer goods donated by incredible corporate partners into our warehouse in Telford to then be able to distribute to our network of thousands of charities across the UK. And as Chris said, I, I'm fairly new uh, into, into the in-kind direct team. And uh, it has been incredible for me to learn about the range of products that are needed by our charities. It's anything from toiletries all the way through to toys and, and small appliances. Um, and we are just so incredibly grateful to all of our corporate partners who make that happen. That's companies including Flying Tiger, and um, we'll hear from Treen uh, soon, but also Amazon, Unilever, PZ Cousins, Dunelm, Beauty Kitchen, Lego and Disney, just to name a few. Um, and, and it's been really you know, great to hear from those partners throughout the crisis about how working with us has really enabled them to make sure that we can make it as easy as possible to, for them to give the products which they spend so long creating out to the many uh, thousands of charities that, that we work with. Um, it's been, uh, as we all know, uh, a challenging time across the UK and, and globally. And I want to share some of the statistics uh, and the big numbers really that sort of highlight what we in Kind Direct have been able to achieve in that period. We've distributed over 10 million pounds worth of essential supplies. We welcome more charities to our network in the last few months than almost in the whole of last year. While also, um, you know, that has behind the scenes meant that there's been a lot of activity, including doubling our warehouse capabilities. Uh, for the first time, we've had to go to split shifts um, at our warehouse in Telford, and that's all enabled us to double the number of de deliveries that we've been able to make each day. Um, and all of that, of course, has been about putting the charities we work with at, at the heart of what we're able to do, because we know how many of them have had to adapt their services. And I'm looking forward to hearing from Nick, particularly about you know, what, what they've been doing as well, because everybody's had to make changes. Um, but at the core of that for us has been getting those products that have enabled those changes to, make, to be possible. Um, I always find it really helpful to take some of these huge big numbers around the value distributed really down to the real practical reality of what that looks like. Uh, I don't know about you, but at the start of uh, lockdown, uh, toilet rolls and stockpiling of toilet rolls was definitely, uh, you know, national news. And we were incredibly fortunate to make sure that we had uh, the supply of toilet rolls that were much needed. And you can see the dramatic number of rolls that we've been able to distribute over the last few months. Um, not only toilet rolls, it has been those core laundry cleaning products to help keep people clean, safe and well. You know, throughout this period, we have um, had to make sure that we're constantly in touch with our um, charity network. It's been daily phone calls with our customer service team. It's been focus groups that we've been hosting. But every year we take the time to ask our charity partners um, you know, what they have uh, found has been most important to them about in-kind direct so we can learn through our impact survey. We've just had our July uh, survey come back to us and we're just analysing those, those findings and wanted to share some of those uh, with you just now as they're sort of hot off the press and would love your thoughts and as you think about questions or even, you know, we're always wanting to listen to what people are needing more of to help them make a difference in their work. Um, we can definitely see that, you know, as we see there, 73% of our charity network are saying to us, it's all been about keeping people clean, safe and well. And we know that's going to continue to be the fundamental part of our work as we look to the end of 2020 and into next year. You know, when I think about what lies behind that. I think about all of the different experiences that we've all had in the last few months. But the need for families to have clean clothes. If I think about families who are, you know, having to survive, um, we know how exhausting that can be. And, and what does an essential product mean? Can mean a variety of different, uh, different things at different times. So is it really about somebody who, you know, when you're at your lowest, having something new, something just for, for that person 
can really help build your self-esteem. Um, that's, that's an essential product to that person at a time. Or when we think about a child who might be scared, a toy at that point can really help them process their fear. Or if you're a young girl and you're starting your period and having the right supply can really stop embarrassment in its tracks. Or if you're a full-time carer and you need that little bit of luxury that lets them know that your needs are not forgotten. We know as, a, as an organisation that in each of those different situations, our charity partners are meeting those needs and we don't want anybody just to have to go by. Those are essential products that we want to be supplying. Um, we can see that more people are having to rely on charities right now. And I'm sure that you would also recognise that where we are today, unfortunately, we, we see that going forward into the next few months, the charity sector um, from the charity finance group tells us we need about 12 billion pounds to keep the sector going. It's a challenging period uh, for, for all of us. And lots of charities, about 40% of charity, our charity partners were not eligible for the government's job retention scheme um, or the business interruption loans. So how can we in kind direct is, is really the question we constantly ask ourselves, help make sure that we can make the, the, the small amount of funding and money that our charity partners have every day go as far as possible. How can we give you the products that you need at the best possible way to stretch your resources to have the impact that you want to have? You know, we've seen through this crisis, so many of our corporate companies step into the, the desire to help even more. We've seen brands uh, such as uh, such as Andrex um, through their through their very kind donation of over a million toilet rolls to in kind direct at the start of lockdown really have an impact around uh, you know uh, being able to get those products to people at the same time their consumers have really understood what it means to share and care for other people um, so for us uh, we will continue to listen to the survey results. And that has um, really helped us to think about how we can help uh, you know, organisations achieve even more in the next few months and, and the years beyond. That feedback that we've had has led to us building out what we have focused on this summer as our summer campaigns. And I know Trine will pick up on um, one of those most free campaigns that we've just finished called Holiday at Home. For many of us, that's exactly where we stayed this year in the last few months. Um, but for many people, that would be the uh, holiday uh, that, you know, has been quite different from other years. And for us, it was about supporting people to keep safe, clean and entertained. Um, and Flying Tiger was our, our key leading supporter in that. That was everything from lolly moulds all the way through to, uh, you know, those essential basic cleaning and hygiene supplies. On the um, at the moment, uh, on the left hand side here, you can see we've got our back to basics campaign. Can't believe that uh, it's already back to school. If you're in Scotland, you're already back at school and, and elsewhere in the UK, but England uh, returning soon. And, uh, you know, we're needing to make sure that those essentials for school, work and home are the what we're hearing is what's needed at the moment. So um, if you go to our catalogue today, you would find that we have a, a great range of products including stationery and lunch boxes through to, uh, you know, toilet roll and, 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 you know, as usual, the feminine hygiene products and those are household essentials. Behind each of those campaigns at the heart lie the most incredible people and organisations who we get to work with every day. Um, I just thought it worth mentioning one organisation that uh, we uh, we heard from just this week, uh, Nuneaton and Bedworth Healthy Living Network. And they said to us they have been using these products um, from Inkind Direct to help almost twice as many people in an average week. I'm sure this resonates with many of you who have joined us this afternoon. Uh, they particularly focus on toiletries, books and school items. And, you know, they said older people in their community have been saying, you know what, we are scared to go out now. Um, we need to work with our older people to regain confidence. 
We know that families um, are in financial crisis, many of them, for the first time. This is what we're hearing from, um, from Nuneaton and Bedworth Healthy Living Network. And with the schools reopening, which is why we have the Back to Basics campaign, you know, many people are needing resources to return to school. So they've said to us, in-kind direct has been vital to them, flexible support at a time of crisis. Um, looking ahead, can't quite believe that it's turning into autumn and we've got Christmas around the corner. Um, we want to ensure that everyone uh, is able to celebrate this year in different ways. And we are already starting to work with different corporate partners to think about what products our charities will need. And so we can make sure we have as many of those available. Um, so if you're already planning your activities for at the end of the year, please do get in touch with us, watch this space, and um, uh, we will let you know what's coming um, as we prepare for, for that winter period. So hopefully that's given you a sense of what we've heard from our charities, what we've been able to, the impact we've had the privilege of being able to deliver in the last few months. You might be on this, um, on this conversation this afternoon and you are a company who hasn't uh, been working with in-kind direct in the past but you know we would love to work with you um, there are such incredible needs of people out there in our in our communities who would love to benefit from uh, the products that you make and create um, you know we have an incredible warehouse team up in Telford we make it very easy, easy for you to donate to one location and we just do the rest um, and, and make sure your products get into the right hands of people who are going to need them most. So we thank you very much for those people who are on this call and who already are part of our corporate partners network. Um, and we look forward to working with you. With Chris, who's hosting, please do be in touch with him. He's our business development manager and would love to speak to anybody who's considering this as something that was core to your company strategy. But of course, if you're a charity, um, we um, know that the best way for us to grow our, our network of charities is by other charities letting them know about us. Um, we would love to have more people join and register for free uh, with us on our website. And um, we would, uh, you know, we know that what we are able to support you with hopefully enables you to save money so you can have a greater impact uh, with the work that you do day in, day out. Um, and of course, we have a wide range of partners through Office Depot and Rico, who are affiliates, who um, are also working with us beyond what we are able to deliver on our catalogue day in, day out. So thank you so much. I hope that updated you on some of what's been happening behind the scenes at InKind Direct in the last few months. And I really look forward to answering any questions that you might have at the end. Um, but um, I'm looking forward to hearing from Nick and Trine. So um, back to you, Chris. Thanks. Thank you, Roseanne. That's great. It was, um, yeah, it's not it's not until you see those big numbers in terms of the number of, of toilet rolls and the number of bottles of hand wash that um, that you realise just how 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 much product is, is moving around the country, supporting people all over the UK, which is great. Um, so hot off the press, just going back to what we said at the beginning, uh, looking at where people are. Um, we have Sam in Denmark, who's doubling our, our Denmark viewers, which is very exciting. Um, and then we've got some people a bit closer, Farringdon, I think I could walk there from our office here in Monument in a few minutes. We've got people in Surrey, Macclesfield, uh, we've got representation in Shropshire, as as Roseanne said, that's where our, our warehouse is, so that's very exciting. Um, and as we were talking about, you know, big quantities of product, um, it, it really cues up our next speaker perfectly, um, because Trine Pondal is next up and she's from Flying Tiger Copenhagen. And um, Treen is the sustainability manager there um, and she oversees everything from audits on circular economy uh, right through to a number of their key charity partnerships, including the, the partnership with Inclined Direct. And before that, before working at Tiger, she, she had a similar role over at the jewellery company Pandora. Um, as I said, she's an ambassador for all things circular economy. Uh, she's trying to optimise the use of resources in a very complex supply chain uh, that is Flying Tiger, Tiger Copenhagen. Um, and yes, they've been working for Inclined Direct. Uh, they've, sorry, they've been working with Inclined Direct since 2017, donating hundreds of pallets and supporting thousands of charities across the UK. Um, so Shireen's going to explain a little bit more about who Flying Tiger Copenhagen are and how they work with Inclined Direct. So again, um, far too much rambling from me, and uh, I'm now going to hand over to Shireen. 
Thank you so much, Chris. So uh, I'm really happy to be able to to talk about some of our uh, one of our favorite uh, partnerships because this is really a problem solving thing for us to partner up with in kind direct. Yeah, so just a short presentation of, of Flying Tiger Copenhagen. Uh, I think uh, most of you will have been into one of our stores and as you know, it's a really wide product range and it's also a lot of campaigning. We have a lot of, of new items all the time every month. Uh, that's uh, that also results in the fact that we have obsolete products quite often, which uh, represents a really big uh, problem for us. And I think that the, the sort of the normal categories that you would get is Christmas and Easter, um, which are obsolete the minute it's over. And then what do we do with the with the leftover stock? But it's also a lot of other things that, that we have to do something about. We have a whole sustainability based uh, sustainability strategy based on the concept of circular economy. And this is the sort of the brief uh, explanation. And basically it's how do we move away from a linear take, make, dispose economy to the circular one where you don't have waste at all. Under that we have sub targets. So we have the, the sort of external targets in our annual report. So we want to have 100% FSC, but then we also have some harder targets which are internal. That's basically because we are a bit, uh, we don't know how to solve that problem. And one of them is zero scrapping of OK food and products by 2025. So the zero scrapping of food products, it's, it, it's been a hot topic for many years and we're moving quite fast on that agenda. But to make sure that we don't scrap any good products is actually quite hard as a corporate partner. I don't know if you haven't been in corporate world, what you see is probably so you, you have all of these uh, nice fully functioning products in the stores and you have some people who would really like to get them. And and it sounds easy, but the fact is that to get the products from here to there or to get them from here, this is the proper warehouse it's in, to these people is maybe 2000 phone calls away from somebody like me because maybe the the end charities they would like to have uh, 20 notebooks and uh, a dozen pencils and 20 backpacks for children but what I have is a hundred thousand or twenty thousand and they're stored in a warehouse where professional warehouse people are set up they're not used to handling stuff like that and that's where in kind direct is just a brilliant solution. So what we do is we take stock from our warehouse through normal channels, just in a quick order, send it to the in kind direct warehouse where it ends up in the catalog like this. These are a tiger items and then they can be ordered by somebody in need. Um, for administration cost in the end. It's just uh, brilliant and uh, I've said it to you in kind direct many times as well. It saves us a lot of a lot of trouble and it makes sure that the good items that we have, they come into good hands and are used in a good way, which is just a really, really nice thing for all of us. And also, um, I've said it before, but I'm, I wanted to take this opportunity to set it uh, to say it again. Uh, we would just love for you guys to set up shop in Denmark because you solve a problem in the UK that we cannot solve in Denmark right now, and uh, we would be happy supported supporters of that. I'm sure uh, we can give you some warehouse uh, contacts also and more corporate partners. So just saying that. So, so what do we? So, what do we get out of it? I mean, it's it's really it's a manifold thing to partner up corporately with in kind direct. We we have a good feeling in the stomach, and we can also show it both externally. This is what we do with obsolete products, but also internally. And I actually think that the internal part is the is the best part of it because it it gives us all a really nice feeling of content to know that what we have been. Um, working particularly at buying in and getting into different countries it goes goes to the right people and then there's another issue of of being flying tiger Copenhagen and then 
being on the donation side because the things that we have in stores might not, at least not all of them, be sort of um, essential products. So this is a unicorn light string. I know we just donated quite a lot of unicorn light strings, but still, even though it's not a backpack, to be able to to have for a little girl to have a unicorn light string in her room and feel just like a normal person. Uh, probably something that she wouldn't have otherwise. It's just an amazing thing to be part of. Uh, and with that, I just want from the bottom of my heart and from the whole company who knows that you, you're there to thank you for doing what you do. And also to thank you for just receiving recently 200 pallets of perfectly good items that I know will go into good places and that I also know otherwise we would have to, to scrap or maybe um, just stop for a long time and bear the cost of that. So it's just it's just a brilliant setup. And that's all for me. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Trine. That's uh, really, really fascinating. And, uh, and as you say, a um, couple of hundred pallets on their way to us, if not already arrived with us, which is very exciting. So all those charities that are that are tuned in and listening to us expect to see those products uh, on, on the online catalogue in the coming weeks. They will feature as part of the Back to Basics campaign. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, and thank you, Trine. And a reminder on questions. We've had a question from Amy um, and keep them coming in. We've we've obviously heard from Roseanne uh, with her wealth of knowledge and experience and her background. So if there's anything that you wanted to ask Roseanne, um, you've got her here. Please do make use of it. Again, with Trine, we're incredibly lucky to have someone from such an influential company like Tiger um, here representing them. So please do make use of it. Put your questions into the chat and we will review them as best we can at the end. Um, so as I uh, as I say, our next uh, our next speaker is um, on the other side of what we do. So we have this wonderful network of companies who like Tiger donate vast quantities of stock to us. And then we have this incredible uh, network of charities across the UK uh, and beyond even, that uh, that do unbelievable work really at the grassroots and communities and that they're the ones that that really work with the people who, who need these products and um, and that's really why we're here so um, and it's why companies like Flying Tiger get involved so um, it's really exciting to hear from one of those charities uh, to hear from Nick Williams uh, from the Renewal Trust so Nick is the community lead there um, and he joined the Renewal Trust last year after a long career in the education sector. So we're very glad to have him in the third sector now. Um, and yeah, the Renewal Trust supports a wide range of people at different times in their life. So um, they do this through a really wide range of activities. And Nick is going to explain um, a little bit about what a regeneration charity does, because the Renewal Trust is, is defined as a regeneration charity and, uh, and how they achieve their amazing impact um, and, and then he'll hopefully talk a little bit about how Inkind Direct helps them uh, to, to support them doing that. So last but certainly not least, I'm very pleased to introduce you to our third speaker, uh, Nick Williams. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so uh, thank you for um, inviting me to uh, join you today. It's really good to be able to share with you all a little bit about the Renewal Trust and also the uh, great partnership um, we've been able to create with InKind. So who are we at the Renewal Trust? We are a re uh, community development charity working in three particular areas of the city centre in Nottingham. Uh, we are proud that there is loads of amazing people doing brilliant things in our community. And as it says, our job is to support that, to support the children, the young people, the adults and the community to do things they love and particularly find a way to help them thrive. We're lucky enough to work in one of the most vibrant areas and whether that's through music, sport, dance, gardening, helping people with their own businesses, we are there to support it and particularly challenging the negativity and particularly to amplify the positive. Some of the areas that we work in are employment outreach, which has been a particular challenge and now is even more of a challenge following COVID. We have creative projects, we've had some amazing opportunities 
in the city, working with some fantastic international artists, taking that right into the community. We've got a sports development programme, we have our own um, sports and leisure centre, which offers the community affordable access to sports, fitness and well-being. But it might just be a sports centre, it's actually a community centre, it has so many more offerings and um, currently as we come out of lockdown we're being taken over by skateboarding at the moment which is very exciting and we also uh, look after the St Anne's allotments which is the oldest and largest collection of Victorian uh, allotments in the UK but it's also uh, one of the largest inner city allotments in the world and that's amazing to have such a wonderful um, resource right in the centre of Nottingham. It's a lovely place to spend time. We also have lots of other areas. We support local organisations with area-based grants. We help with D DBSs, small community grants. We have a number of buildings that we support local businesses as startups or charities. And we uh, recently launched RTTV, which is a YouTube channel where community partners can share the work they're doing in the community. And that led to this year celebrating the great get together. And there's just some faces there of all the different people that came together um, during lockdown to, to celebrate still being part of the community, even if we couldn't be together. Doing it differently is our catchphrase. As Chris said, I joined in September 2019. And it really was about the, the bits I love in education, about making a difference to people and being at the heart of the community. And it was really a time to do something different. And when we say do something different, then in March 2020, as we all know, the challenge hit us of COVID-19. And that really was a time to rethink, redo and do things differently. And at that time, that is where on my hunt to do things differently, I found In Kind Direct. One of our first projects as part of lockdown was the Feel Good Packs, which was for families of young people. And that was through a conversation of really how were we going to keep people active and healthy and not just through sports, but how we would help them be um, feel good about themselves through um, COVID. And one of the things that we particularly picked up was um, as a charity, what was classed as vulnerable, uh, we all had an idea of what vulnerable was, but actually COVID changed that and people necessarily wouldn't have classed vulnerable previously, now became into vul a vulnerable category. The, the change to people, they couldn't go to school, they, you couldn't go to work and the, the implications really did change that. What we did, and you can see at the bottom there, we just pulled together lots of organisations who all had the, the same challenges and actually wanted to work together to do something. And we, we brought them all together to actually deliver the feel good packs. And I think that's been key for us over COVID is looking at those new ways, new partners, and also with some of our old partners, but thinking differently about how we do it. So the field group packs today were delivered to 310 family packs, 95 teenage packs. And we went on to support the city council with the golden number, which was the uh, main number where anyone in need could contact for support. And if there was a need there, we got those packs out to them in the city. Um, the teenage packs particularly had lots of sporting equipment in them but also had the um, feel good factor bits in it, um, such as the uh, hygiene products and the hand creams just to, to make young people feel good. And then the family packs um, just had really nice activities in them, um, lots of nice things from Tiger. And again, we just had lots of help from other organisations below who just came on board and wanted to work together in a different way. The feedback there, um, just pick out the last two there. I can't think of anything that would have made it better. Lots of different activities for the children. It was amazing, couldn't have asked for more. And the pictures at the side there, you can see our sports centre, which allowed us to work um, socially distanced and um, COVID. You can see the team there with the bags spread out and bags packed, ready for delivery. And again, we were lucky that um, a local business helped us um, do the deliveries. And um, I don't appear on any of these photos because I was actually shielding. So I was that person working from home and um, organising it all. But an amazing team of people who came out to deliver all our packs. And to our wonderful relationship with 
in kind. We joined in April and that's when I um, first came across the organisation. Today we've had 11 orders go through and you can just see there the um, amount of goods we've received and that amazing saving that we have achieved through Inkind Direct. And um, this is Evie, one of our young people who attend one of our toddler sessions with her um, feel good pack there. And you can just see the variety of items that uh, we were able to Inkind Direct. And um, again, for Tiger, there's one of your uh, money boxes there. And um, this is a, a short piece that was shared with uh, from Nottingham City Council a little bit about the feel good. So we're packing 300 activity packs today, a um, whole load for families and also some for teenagers. to go out just so everybody knows that they've all we've got somebody supporting them it's good for the children so they have something to keep them active give them a little bit of excess doing the garden and at home and i'd say it's just generally stimulating their minds while they're locked down so we're using our Local partners, so that's Nottingham City Homes, Metropolitan, SEND, CRS, Greenway, Epic. We're using our local partners to get these out to the right families who need them. So we're packing there we go and uh, that just gave you a little feel of how it was shared in Nottingham. The uh, amazing success of that led to a campaign with uh, This Girl Can where we were able to offer 150 packs out to our partners and also then another 150 packs out to uh, women aged 16 to 26 to apply on social media and you can um, see there in the picture, there's a number of products, the water bottles, the wash bags, the products that went inside all came from Incan Direct. And I was, when thinking about this, I was just going through all the list of the different um, items that we've had from Incan um, Direct, whether it's uh, money boxes, Lego, stationery, shower gel, deodorants, um, the water bottles have gone out in summer, activity packs um, to each of the parks this summer. And I think the key for us is that without Inkai Direct, we wouldn't be able to afford those products or the amount of products that we are able to, which means we can support and help more families. Um, just to end now on, there's a final pitch here. This was um, one of the benefits of working with Inkind Direct. Most places wouldn't allow deliveries to move from the office when we all ended up working from home. Uh, this was my garage and my doorway as in-kind deliveries uh, would arrive. That's my dad there helping out on the drive, pack wash bags with uh, in-kind direct um, smellies and things in. But it really was, it was a way of doing it differently. In-kind were there for us, worked with us to make sure that would work. It had the right things that we needed to support the community. And in also work in the community, I know Frank, the delivery driver, very well, who even knows to drive the delivery van to my garage. I know the recycle men because they know that there's extra boxes and they help because it's helping others. So thank you in kind for being a great organisation and for supporting us as local organisations who can help and make a difference in the community. So thanks for giving me the time to talk to you all and I look forward to answering your questions later. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Nick. That was fascinating. A whistle stop tour of all the amazing work that the Renewal Trust do. Um, I just think those those packs of products um, were, were particularly inspiring. Um, the, the, the just the range of products that you were that you were distributing out and I think looking at the Q&A there might be some questions around that uh, in a bit um, but no it's it's fascinating obviously I I work on the side of Inkind Direct where I'm working with a number of our corporate partners um, but I feel I sit in this incredibly privileged position where 
I have this network of engaged companies on one side who are trying their best to support people across the UK. And I also have this wonderful network of charities doing exactly the kind of work that we need doing uh, in the grassroots across the UK. So thank you, Nick. That's um, really, really fascinating to see. So as I alluded to, we are moving on to our um, Q&A section. So hopefully you can see a slide that says Q&A, which is very good. Um, I've been seeing lots of them come up. We've got just under 20 minutes left and we might be able to give you a little bit of time back towards the end. Um, so I'm going to start, being that Nick has just spoken, I'm going to start by directing one back to Roseanne, if that's all right. Um, so the question to Roseanne that's come through is, have you um, have you seen, what's the most innovative use of a product by a charity that you've seen or that you know of? Um, obviously, you've been here for a year. You've seen a number of of, uh, of donations of product and we've distributed lots. So um, if there's any product that stands out to you, that'd be really interesting. Oh, uh, gosh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I think instantly uh, my mind goes to uh, the, the, the very basic but much needed toilet roll. Um, which, uh, <laughs> uh, as we saw earlier, uh, you know, we have delivered over 800,000 in, in just the last few months. Um, so, you know, you could imagine there might only be one use for a toilet roll. But during this period in lockdown, uh, those of you who have children, uh, I can imagine have found many uses for toilet roll, uh, actually the, the holders, the little cardboard uh, pieces that are left. So I think we've actually seen that some of our products have uh, very much, as you said, Treen, turned into a circular uh, solution as the products themselves have been passed on from our corporate partner and uh, we've been able to use all aspects of that uh, to then actually be able to make all sorts of little toilet roll uh, people I've seen in people's houses. Uh, um, all sorts of toilet roll uh, contraptions has been absolutely hilarious. Um, so I think that's that's one example of using this. Um, I think others um, we've also seen are actually thinking about uh, using washing up liquid again to create uh, slime toys um, and also other products again for sensory purposes. Um, if you think about uh, colanders uh, in the kitchen, we may use them uh, as just sort of cooking implements, but actually if, you're, if you are working with people who are autistic or maybe have various disabilities or learning uh, disabilities, actually um, they're very sensory and something like tinfoil or a colander can be used in different ways. Uh, so those are just a few ideas, um, but of course Lego uh, is also incredibly creative. Uh, and uh, I've seen some amazing, wonderful flying uh, spaceships and uh, all sorts of weird and wonderful contraptions having been made by uh, many of our charity partners and their communities uh, out of Lego. So uh, I'm sure uh, those of other people are on, the, on this conversation most probably have seen other fun ways that products could be used. Uh, I think one of the benefits of this last few months has been, as you said, Nick, uh, us all having to be innovative and creative in different ways. Thank, thank you, Rosanne. That's yeah, and I think actually, as you say, um, that's a really good, a good point to fire back across to Nick um, because we we've had another question that just says, out of all the items that you receive from Inkind Direct, what would you say is the most valuable product to your organisation, um, and is it something you might not expect? So, you know, in, in the course of making those packs, you mentioned a few, but is there one item or a, or a couple of items that really stand out to you? As you said that, I was trying to think, what's the one item that stood out? And then I started writing a little list and it, it just grew because I think they were, there was different products that hit different demands and different times at different needs. So um, I think of the hygiene and what we call the smelling products, all those things, they, there was that, they added to a feel good factor as well as offering really good hygiene to some people who really needed it. They, they were just sometimes it was nice to make people feel good about themselves. So you got something you really needed, but you also got something nice. And I think that was just as important as much as the, the things that were really needed. It was important to look at that, what made us vulnerable um, and make sure people felt good about themselves. But it was a little bit about the water bottles. Actually, we were able to give every young person who came along over summer a water bottle, which was reusable rather than having to go and buy 
squash or cartons of juice that got thrown away we was able to give them something that was useful to them that they can now take back into school or take out to when they join sports clubs again so i think it's that sustainability as well but it's been creative wash bags we've used those to put pp items in for people we've made them into pencil cases so as much as i loved all the lego and i made a few little bits of lego myself as those deliveries came it was about being creative and using things that perhaps wouldn't normally be used for Thanks, Nick. That's uh, that's fascinating. Really, really interesting. And, and as you say, we um, we hear a lot from our from our charity network. And as as Roseanne spoke about in her presentation, we we send out these questionnaires. So we're always trying to work out exactly what it is that our network of charities need, so that you know my team can reach out to those companies and, and try and secure those products. Um, so going back onto the corporate side, um, the next question is going to go across to Treen. Um, you mentioned it in your in your in your presentation, but um, the question is is geared around how how do you get employees involved with this kind of charity partnership, and um, and how do you sort of amplify the work that you do with the charities, including in Kind Direct? Well. Um... There are various ways. Some of the employees, they are involved really hands on because it's a part of their work to help in kind of get the goods. So and I've never quite frankly, I've never seen things happening so fast in logistics before than with a donation to in kind directors so eager uh, to step up and they want to do everything they can because they just realize it's it's such an important thing to get the goods where they have to go. But then also we do a lot of internal communication and it's it's something that's uh, people are aware that we're doing and even though we're based in in Denmark they are aware that we're helping a lot of UK charities and they're really happy about it so people quite frequently ask me so how, how are things going with the donations and we could do a lot more on that um, which is a note to myself I should do more <laughs> show more pictures yes I'll do that yeah absolutely and as you say that's that's part of our role as this kind of middle organization to to really get those stories from those charities like like the renewal trust um, and and really be the conduit for them through this system to to really allow you and your team to understand the incredible work that your products are doing across the uk and, and beyond and i've just seen in the chat we have representation from one of our in-kind direct, in, in -kind direct international partners don solidaire who work in france so welcome we are pan-European now, which is very exciting. Um, so yes, I think we'll do one final question before we just start to wrap up. And I am going to go back to Razan. Um, we've talked about all of the products that we've we've seen. Obviously, we've we've talked about uh, two hundred odd pallets coming from Tiger. Um, the the question is, it's great to see what products you have already. What other things are really needed as we look forward to the future? That's a great question, and. Um, and, and as you said, Chris, uh, the wonderful thing is we, we know we're hearing from our charity partners day in, day out, and that will that changes. We know there's a seasonality to what our charity partners are needing. Um, and there's a seasonality as well as Treen said to when our corporate partners are able to give some of those products, often after Christmas or Easter or particular time. So we are able to marry that need with the with the supply. Um, as we look forward, I think one area that has changed considerably, uh, as we've all discovered, is being able to work in a virtual environment. Um, we're all needing uh, better tech support, whether that's hardware or software. And an area that we know at InKind Direct we're hearing from is a requirement uh, for our, from our charity partners to be able to make sure we have increased uh, tech. That could be things like laptops, it could be tablets, it could even be mobile phones um, and it could be learning tools and devices. Um, we know that uh, more and more people have had to be working virtually. Um, so I think that tech uh, in its broader sense is an area that we would love to be working with even more companies in that space uh, and open up doors to be able to uh, have a, a greater supply of those products. Um, I think, though, that we know that we would like to increase our range um, of toys. That's what we're hearing. Um, but and uh, but at the heart of everything we do is is we know that having that steady supply of the absolute essentials. And we talked earlier about what do we mean by that uh, word essential, but the household cleaning products through to those uh, aspects of helping people keep clean, safe and well. You know, day in, day out, that has to be our focus. I would love to think 
that any time somebody came to the in-kind direct um, uh, online shop, they would be able to know, do you know what? They're going to have exactly what I need of those essentials. So more as well of what we have today is what we're hearing, as well as some of those new um, categories. And it's great having Chris and, and others in the team to be able to focus on expanding uh, those product ranges as we look to 2021. Thank you, Roseanne. I couldn't have said it better myself. Those are the exact kind of products that my team are actively looking to go out and speak to people about. So as, as we say, if anyone needs to get in contact with me, um, my details are on this slide, along with our other people who are here and involved. Um, that, that kind of brings us to a close, unless, um, unless I get waved that from one of the other speakers and they want to say something else. We are, we are drawing it to a close now. Um, it, it leaves me to kind of say, there's a few things to remind you of. Um, as, as Roseanne alluded to, we, we have this Back to Basics campaign that's running at the moment. Um, there are some incredible products going up there. I know there are more scheduled for next week. So all of the charities that are that are joining us today, please do keep your eyes peeled for stuff coming out on there. There's some really key essentials there. The whole, you know, the whole campaign is geared towards keeping people clean, healthy, and entertained and well. So um, do keep checking the catalogue and, and, and look at that. And as I say, if there are any corporate partners who are who are logging on and listening to this talk who want to get in touch with me or Maya or Eva on the on the business development team, then please do. Do let us know uh, because we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to help you meet those you know circular economy corporate social responsibility goals um, that we we know you're you're keen to meet and and no more so this year with the pandemic um companies are are seeing the benefits of product giving so it's a it's a really exciting time to be to be working in this sector um it's very exciting as well that as it says on the screen we have our next webinar um, our next event is on the 23rd of september we're going for a morning slot this time, so um, please do join us with a cup of coffee on the 23rd of September. We'll be sending out more information in the coming weeks. Um, the information of this, uh, this, this webinar will be sent out within the next week, so um, keep your eyes peeled for that. There'll be, um, the slides will come around and you can have a look at that. Um, the final thing is just to say an enormous thank you to, to Nick and to Treen. Um, as I said, it's an incredibly busy time of year. Treen is dealing with trying to get hundreds of pallets across the channel to us. Nick is shipping out hundreds upon hundreds of, uh, of care packages every single week by the sounds of it. So it's really amazing that they've taken the time to, to pull this together. Um, and thank you for bearing with us with a few of the little tech things, but hopefully it was all fairly seamless. Um, and, and also because this is our first one, please do let us know if you have any comments, any feedback. Um, we'd love to hear about it. Just drop us an email to one of those emails there that you see on the screen uh, because we're we're learning in this space and and we're we're very excited to be to be a part of it but um yeah we, we appreciate your feedback so thank you enormously to everyone who's been involved thank you all for for joining us and uh and yes we'll see you next time on the 23rd of september <laughs>